Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm doing okay. Are you excited to talk about this book? Jesus Christ, this book, Carrie. <laughs> so, this is an exciting episode. This is. We are going to talk about a really, uh, well, uh, maybe I shouldn't give away what we think about it, but we think this book is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say special in quotation marks. <laughs> Terrible is pretty accurate. Yeah. So this is a book called Shiver by uh, Maggie. Steve Otter. Steve Otter. And it's the first book in the Wolves of Mercy Falls series. Will we read more books in this series? Probably not. Probably not. Maybe. Probably not. Uh, it was published in 2011, and it's like 390 pages. And uh, so we're going to spoil things and, and whatnot. So if you're worried about that, you can pause this and come back after you've read it. But maybe you don't want to bother. Yeah. Uh, we'll try to be entertaining and explain most of the plot. <laughs> Not that that's our real strength, I think. But... No, I think our real strength is tearing apart little bits of the plot, not actually um, <laughs> saying a whole lot about what the book is about. But the fact that it is the Wolves of Mercy Falls series might give you a slight hint yeah. as to what we're about to talk about. Is there hot werewolf sex? Maybe. Well, maybe not that hot. No, it's really not that hot, which I was kind of bummed about. Yeah, it's kind of off screen. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, so we're going to do that. But also, we got reader mail for the first time, emails, and uh, we're going to go through some of that. And if you have something, you, a question you for us or feedback or whatever, you can send it to podcast at Love You Like Crazy. Oh, which is the name of this podcast, Love You Like Crazy. How about that? And we have a website at loveyoulikecrazy.com. Love, Y-A, like crazy. Uh, what am I forgetting, Carrie? I love a good pun is what it really boils down to. Yeah. I don't know if we're forgetting a whole lot, except the fact that I'm Carrie, you're Jake, and this is Love You Like Crazy, and we're about to talk about a book. All right, let's do it. Yay! For me, like, I think the, uh, the crisis came when I decided, you know, because normally I read a book and then I read it again and take notes. Yeah. That second reading was tough. <laughs> <laughs> I did not take notes. I just sort of went with it and, and said, okay, I, I know this book well enough to remember who everybody is and remember that I hate everybody. Sure. May I ask a favor? Do you have the book in front of you? I don't. Oh, okay. Yes, I, I, do, I do have the book somewhere in the bed, which is not a good place to keep a book like this, I suppose, because then it makes you feel really dirty when it's wolf sex time. Oh, yeah. A lot of, a lot of uh, well, not a lot. Actually, surprisingly little. <laughs> but I remember when we started doing this podcast, you told me uh, that YA books these days, it's like there's just bone in left and right. <laughs> but I think this is the first book where there's actual hot uh, werewolf sex. Well, yes, this is the first one with hot werewolf sex, but... There's, I'm sure. Okay, so book is in front of me. What do you need? I would like you to read the maybe the first the first couple of paragraphs, or maybe the entire first chapter, since it's so short. Okay, I can do that. Great. Let's see. So it's uh, chapter one, Grace, fifteen degrees Fahrenheit. Is that the one we're reading? That's the one. What those fucking temperatures? Anyways, well, the temperatures are because, well, you know why? I do because. The wolves, or the, the the wolves, not wolves, Carrie. This is basic grammar. Um, the wolves don't change into their wolfness until it's cold. So we need to know exactly what the temperature is to know how wolf or human these wolves might be. But the temperatures don't correspond to anything obvious, like. There are, there are chapters that are like forty two degrees and it's snowing out, and yet there's people. Yeah, and there's people also. I, <laughs> yeah okay anyway chapter one grace 15 degrees fahrenheit i remember lying in the snow a small red spot of warm going cold surrounded by wolves they were licking me biting me worrying at my body pressing in their huddled bodies blocked what little heat the sun offered Ice glistened on their ruffs, and their breath made opaque shapes that hung in the air around us. The musky smell of their coats made me think of wet dog and burning leaves. I'm sorry! <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. I, I think you made it farther than I could have. <laughs> Pleasant and terrifying. Their tongues melted my skin. Their careless teeth ripped at my sleeves and snagged through my hair. 
pushed at my collarbone, the pulse at my neck. So do you think that, I feel like you want to be, if it's cold out, you prefer to be surrounded by, I'm just talking about the temperature aspect. Obviously, you don't you don't want to get eaten to death by werewolves. But like snuggling up to a couple of warm, furry dogs, not so horrible. Yes, exactly. All right. And then <laughs> uh, wet dog and burning leaves, pleasant and terrifying. Uh, uh, well, anyway. Uh, oh, I'll read the next bit. Okay. I could have screamed, but I didn't. <gasps> I could have fought, but I didn't. I just lay there and let it happen, watching the winter white sky go gray above me. <laughs> oh, sorry, this is just amazing. <laughs> and this is—I mean, we're, we're, this is as sexual as sexual can be. And, and she's eleven. Well, right. Well, I was going to ask, like, how old? Did, when you read this, first of all, when I read this the first time, I thought it was a dream until I read the second chapter. Yeah. Uh, perhaps influenced by Awoken, <laughs> um, which there's a lot of similarities. <laughs> Um, but, uh, and then, yeah, I don't know. 11, like 11 seems too old and too young for this. Yeah. Um, because it's, well, whatever. Uh, one wolf prodded his nose into my hand and against my cheek, casting a shadow across my face. His yellow eyes looked into mine while the other wolves jerked me this way and that. Like she's dead at this point, isn't she? Like, how is she still alive? She's pretty freaking dead, but obviously not. No. Can you read the next bit? I, I certainly can. I held on to those eyes for as long as I could. Yellow. And up close, flecked brilliantly with every shade of gold and hazel. I didn't want him to look away. And he didn't. No, nope. good. <laughs> I wanted to reach out and grab a hold of his ruff. But my hand stayed curled on my chest, my arms frozen to my body. I couldn't remember what it felt like to be warm. <sighs> Yeah. How many shades of gold do you think there are? One. Yeah. Gold. <laughs> Pretty literal here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, occasionally there's what? There's gold. There's like shiny gold, dull gold, <laughs> golden rod. I don't know. It's it's yeah. yellow. Man, those eyes are made a lot of, and they, but they're, they, they, it doesn't really. Uh, nothing really comes of that other than it makes him easy to recognize in both of his forms. But that's what's important. They need to be easy to recognize because nobody has yellow eyes. Like nobody has yellow eyes. Right. People, ha people have hazel eyes, which might have flecks of gold in them. People might have brown eyes with flecks of gold in them, but nobody has yellow frigging eyes. Nobody. I'm sorry, but nobody. So yeah. The fact that he has these yellow eyes that are easily recognizable in both wolf and human form. And how convenient is that, that the wolves have people eyes? Pretty freaking convenient. Yeah, like, and yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, well, I'll just finish this up. <laughs> then he was gone, and without him, the other wolves closed in, too close, suffocating. Something seemed to flutter in my chest. That'd be your heart, girl. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think you're right about that. <laughs> there was no sun. There was no light. I was dying. I couldn't remember what the sky looked like. But I didn't die. I was lost to a sea of cold, and then I was reborn into a world of warmth. I remember this, his yellow eyes. I thought I'd never see them again. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Oh, foreshadowing. And that's when the book ends. She never yeah. sees... Oh. It's like, oh, that's, that's a really short book. Yeah. So with that out of the way, so basically, you know, uh, speaking to the listener, Carrie, you know, as uh, I think we said in the introduction, which we haven't recorded yet, <laughs> Carrie suggested this as an example of a book that we could just tear to shreds like a werewolf. And, uh, and so I started reading it and I read that first chapter and I sent carry a text which said i think i could talk for 20 minutes just about the first chapter which is two pages long so what's happening in this first chapter is that the main female character grace was sitting on a tire swing in her backyard um in the middle of winter in is it minnesota or 
where are or Wisconsin, one of those like coldy, northy places. And uh, some wolves pull her off the the uh, the tire swing and eat her. Right. And then Sam, the werewolf, the one with the yellow eyes, starts to go away, then turns into a person. I guess picks her up and brings her inside. Naked. Right. I'm not sure what happens after that because if if he was naked and the parents saw it, then even even her parents, I think, would probably um have mentioned that. Or <laughs> like what did you do to my child? Yeah. But as as we discover in the book, her parents are they're not home. They're never home. Her parents are the worst. We've seen some bad YA parents. <laughs> but her parents are just like, oh, thanks for cooking this five-course dinner for us, honey. We're going to go disappear now. Bye. Yeah. but And then also, like, so she gets attacked by wolves when she's 11 and almost dies. And I guess goes to the hospital. They still let her, like, sit out and read in the cold, you know, until the time of the book when she's 17 like she spends a lot of time outdoors reading and look and keeping an eye out for the wolves who she's now like fixed fixated on and loves even though they almost killed her um so they let her do that but then also well don't forget what her dad did yeah so this is yeah this is like a month or two after um she had the flu which was actually her turning into a werewolf uh and So this is how it's described. Anyway, I had the flu, I guess, and I was just stupid with sleep. So on the way home, I fell asleep in the back seat, and the next thing I remember was waking up in the hospital. I guess Dad had gotten home and gotten the groceries out and forgotten about me. Just left me (laughs) locked in the car, I guess. I guess. I guess. They said I tried to get out. You can get out of a locked car. You can. But I don't remember that really. I don't remember anything until the hospital where the nurse was saying that it was the hottest May day on record for Mercy Falls. The doctor told my dad the heat in the car should have killed me, so I'm a miracle girl. How's that for responsible parenting? It's terrible for responsible <laughs> parenting. That is not like you should you should be taken away from those parents after yeah. almost. I mean, I guess that you can't really hold them responsible for her getting attacked by wolves, but like leaving her in the car, you know. So, oh, honey, here's the here's the chubby hubby ice cream. Where's the child? Like no one thinks to look for her. Like who's gonna cook dinner? They're just gonna they're just gonna sit there and starve because no one's cooking them dinner. <laughs> well, she's eleven, like she maybe she's making bologna sandwiches or something at that point. Who knows? But yeah, um yeah, that's like terrible. Have you read any of the sequels? I'm guessing not. I have. Oh, you have? I have. Why? <laughs> <laughs> glutton for punishment i wanted to see what happened yeah and i got halfway through the second one and was done with that sure i was like nope you know what i i love myself too much to continue <laughs> i read the wikipedia entry for That's the not as, good, as much as you need to do really <laughs> it's not very well written the wikipedia entry for the wolves of mercy falls this is number one in the series uh but uh one of the things from the the third book I thought was notable. Uh, It says, um, Grace visits her parents to say goodbye, but they have replaced her with a cat. I remember reading (laughs) that. That was amazing. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah, because I I looked at the Wikipedia as well um, because I needed to remember, like, how the second book went. I saw that. and I was like, wait, they replaced her with a cat? (laughs) Like, that sounds like something, like, only the worst YA parents in the world. I mean, I mean, Sam's parents were right. awful, but oh. <laughs> they took an active interest in his upbringing. I think we can say that <laughs> <laughs> they certainly did. <laughs> oh my okay. god! Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the wolves or the wolves as people. Sure. There's a, there's a few of them. There's Sam. Mm-hmm. We all know Sam. He's got he's got yellow eyes and he's dreamy as fuck. Yeah. Uh, then we've got Beck, who's his uh, like wolf guardian, also maybe turned him into a wolf. Definitely did, yeah. Yeah. Then there's Shelby, who's the white wolf, who just shows up randomly and pees on things. <laughs> yep, as you do. <laughs> as you do. Uh, there's Jack, and my note for him, 
is done got bitted. Yep. Now unstable. Uh, Jack kind of seems like a coke fiend to me. Yeah. And my footnote is also dead. <laughs> yeah, sure. And of course now I'm thinking, I wonder if Jack was named after Jack London. Oh, that's interesting. Just came to me. I was like, oh, Jack London called the wild wolves. Huh. I wonder if that's a thing. Mm. So anyway, that's my, uh, my, my new th- fan theory is that it's uh, really an allegory <laughs> about, I don't know. I'm just making shit up. Yes. It's so bad. Uh, man's inhumanity to wolf and vice versa. Yeah, yeah. Then we've also got the German wolf. That's Ulrich mm-hmm. and Paul, who's the black wolf, comma, crazy pants. Right. So they all live together in this big house in uh, Beck's house. Uh, where they they hang out in the summer, and they all turn into wolves and hang out in the winter. Right, and Beck is a lawyer, and was it, no one thinks he's dead, so he's able to just do his practice in the summer and ha- makes enough money that he can kind of maintain this house and buy books for Sam to read and, and whatnot. Yeah. I, I actually have some other wolf names here. I don't know if they're actually... Around or some of them, I think, are dead. But uh, Derek, Melissa, and Bauer were those the new, the three new ones, or no? Bauer is the one who died in Texas when when. Uh... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I remember that because they uh they said he he changed due to um, air conditioning. Yes, and got shot on spot. Yeah. So these names, I don't know. Naming a character Beck. I don't know. That's tricky to me. <laughs> maybe that's his last name. Mm. Maybe he just goes by Beck. Like maybe his name is Jonathan Beckham. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe he's not actually a lawyer. He's a musician. I hope so. He's a Scientologist. and <laughs> That would explain <laughs> so much. Scientology is an occult. They're just all werewolves. Yeah. So we're supposed to think Beck is basically a good guy, do you think? We're supposed to think he's a... Ah, shit. I don't know. Because I like him because I because because Sam likes him and and because Grace likes him right. But he's also kind of a dick. I mean, he's you know instead of kind of letting the werewolf thing die out, he's just like let's recruit more, let's let's go eat this small child and raise him because his parents were sucky, and he didn't know that the parents were like creepy evangelical Christians or whatever. He's just like, oh, I just didn't think they'd do a good job. I was very struck by the scene where uh, he opens his SUV and he has like a trunk full of Canadian kids yes! who are all like tied up and and asking for help. But then later he says, oh, they all knew what they were getting themselves into. Like they'd all, you know, like, like how do you just like go up to a bunch of random teenagers and say like, do you want to be part of a pack? Yeah. Um, I don't know. So saying that, you know, they knew or or they volunteered for it was sort of a little bit, like, concerning, but I don't quite believe that because they were all bloody and asking for help. Yeah, and it seems, I mean, I feel like Sam should have told Grace about that way. Like, there's just no consequence to this discovery for... Like a third of the book. Yeah. You know, this has happened, and the main result is that Sam doesn't want to talk to Beck, which is pretty mild, I feel like. Like, that's a bad thing. You should you should tell Grace about that. <laughs> yeah. You tell her that you're a werewolf. I mean, that's bigger than like, oh, by the way, Beck went and recruited some other werewolves, and I feel a little icky about that. Yeah. But I guess he and Grace don't have the best communication. No, they're too busy talking. Yeah, well, that's that's for damn sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. My God, what, like, uh, you know, um, it seems like, I don't know, they, they waited a really long time to have sex. I know. And I hope she's pregnant. <laughs> I hope to fucking God she's pregnant. I know they, they specifically said, oh, we used protection. Yeah, I, I did appreciate that in the book. But I hope she's pregnant with little puppies. I hope yeah. she's got a litter in there. <laughs> <laughs> a dozen <laughs> little puppies. That would be amazing. Um, How long did Wolves gestate? I don't know. Let me Google this. Yeah, there we go. 
<laughs> what does Google have to say about this? Wolfgestation.com. Perfect. Not very long. <laughs> 62 to 75 days. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. A couple of months. No big. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. She. Mm, yeah. Well, very good. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. Yeah. So back. So I, I feel conflicted about back. Like, I think he's a good guy for the most part. I think he was a, a good father figure for Sam. And I think he really tried to protect Sam while also rearing him to be the alpha because he knew that Sam was such a, you know, because Sam was, you know, 97% perfect except for all that, you know, werewolf whatnots. But he's, you know, he taught him how to kill <laughs> other things. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a whole big thing. That was a whole big thing. Um, so I don't, I don't hate Beck. And I, I think his, his, he's, he's got the sort of a good heart in there somewhere. But the fact that, you know, the fact that he bit Sam so Sam could be a werewolf instead of just being like, hey, cute kid, I like your eyes. Like, you should continue to be a human. Or like, hey, Canadian kids, you probably don't want to die in a couple of years. Yeah. Do you want to stay human? Instead, he's like, eh, for the good of the pack. This is all pack thing. And maybe that, maybe that is a, a pack behavior. I don't know. Maybe, you know. Maybe if a regular wolf out in the wilderness sees another wolf, they're like, hey, you want to be wolves together? I, I don't know. I mean, maybe he doesn't want there to be a lone wolf. But it's still kind of fucked up and weird. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, it seems like the book wants us to like him. And you, like you do, because you like Sam, basically. Yeah. And then Beck is essentially Sam, but older and a little weirder <laughs> um but in terms of what he actually does in the book it's a lot of it is kind of horrifying it is so one of the things he does uh that we just alluded to was sam asked um because they were living in a place that had these awful dogs on the property and sam was like oh i feel a little squiffed out by these dogs you know what happens if they get out how do we how do we kill them and uh, Beck got up some chickens and said, okay, now go here and you cut here and do this. And Sam was like, okay, cool. And then he got him some bloody meat and said, okay, this is what you do. And then he got him some other stuff. And finally he taught him how to kill by, you know, showing him a lot of dog fights, which was horrifying to read. I mean, because I just kept thinking, like, did the author watch a lot of dog fights to, like, be able to get this accurate or is she making this up because this is fucking gross hmm. until finally Sam of course had to had to kill another dog um, who was not a wolf I don't believe no. and then found out that uh, the crazy southern bell wolf Shelby had let them out yep. Shelby is the one that likes to pee on things to assert her dominance because she wants to be the alpha girl along with Sam being the alpha man. Uh, she wants to be the, the, the top lady dog um, in the pack. And she doesn't actually want to be a person. She's like, eh, fuck this being a person bullshit. Like, I want to be a doggy forever. Yeah. So she's kind of horrifying and she hates Grace, of course. To be fair, Grace is <laughs> kind of hateable. She's kind of hateable. I mean, there's the thing about Grace is, you know, like so many other female characters in these YA romantical uh, supernatural novels, like there's nothing to them. She's such a blank slate. She's Andromeda slate all over again. Yeah, and kind of a jerk to her friends. Um, well, maybe we should talk about her friends a little. Yeah. So there's Rachel, uh, who's really caffeinated and excitable and wants everyone to go away on Christmas vacation someplace. Yeah. I thought, I, I felt like she was pretty well written. Like I, f I felt that was a recognizable person there. Yeah. And then there's Olivia who is obsessed with wolves also, but, um, but she and Grace, I think it seems like they're both kind of introverts in some sense yeah. and they don't really get along when Rachel isn't there to kind of 
connect them. Exactly. Although part of that also is like a plot contrivance because the plot requires them not to talk to each other for large parts of the book or else Grace will know what Jack is up to and Sam will also, you know, so that needs to, they need to be kept separate. And, yeah, uh, and they know that, that <clears throat> Olivia knows because she took the, because she's a photographer and she took pictures of it. Right. She took pictures of Jack as a wolf and as a human after he was supposed to have died. Um, and uh, Jack talks to her and finds out that um, that Grace got bitten but never turned into a wolf and thinks that she knows the secret of how to be cured. Which, in this book, it seems like, I mean, like uh, being bitten by a wolf but then almost getting killed by your neglectful parents by being left in a car is like a pretty sweet deal because she has like super senses, like she can smell and... Uh, I think here really well if she lets herself and she heals quickly. Like it seems pretty sweet. And she could also sort of do the, the mind meld with the wolves because when Sam took her out into the woods and was like, oh, look at this lovely golden area. She's like, oh, my God, it's so beautiful. Yeah. Because he'd sent her the pictures in his mind. So romantic. Yeah, I know. Because he's testing to see if she's wolfy or not. Yeah, that is one thing about uh, Sam that I didn't care for, is that he kept kind of um, putting Grace through these weird tests without telling her. And I was like, why are you doing that? Like, just say something. Like, say, hey, you were bitten by my friends. Um, Do you have any, like, after effects, maybe? Yeah. (laughs) Here are some signs that you might be a wolf. Um, Okay, so there's Rachel and Olivia, and then there's Isabel, who's Jack's younger sister. Yeah. So Isabel, like, I feel like the book wants us to dislike Isabel, at least for most of the book, but... I like her. Yeah, I thought she was... I thought, I was like, if this book were about Isabel, I think it would be, like, the main character would actually do stuff and, (laughs) like, try to solve problems. (laughs) It would be great. She's asking questions, and, like, she's suspects something so she's like i'm not gonna beat around the bush i'm not gonna put you through a weird like test i'm just gonna go up to you in class and say i know you know something why don't you friggin tell me yeah and grace is like well why are you talking why are you asking me this what are you even talking about and it's i just you know like have some sympathy like this this woman's older brother who's like a jerk and clearly they don't really like each other but he he just died (laughs) you know um and then, uh, and then at the very end, like she is, she is so nice to Grace. Like yeah. that was that was a part there. So um, I guess uh, Maggie Stiefvater. I actually looked it up. I had and and, and she, it's it's Steve Otter. Steve Otter. Okay. Yeah, I had to look it up because I wanted to be able to say it properly. Because I think for the last I don't know five years I've been saying Stiefvater. Uh, but it's she says it's Steve, as in the name Steve, and mm-hmm. Otter, as in the animal. So it's Steve Otter. There you go. All right. Still trivia for you, ladies and gentlemen. Steve Otter. All right. Um, oh, so she basically wanted to write a tearjerker. Like, she was inspired by reading The Time Traveler's Wife, uh, which she read twice, and she cried twice. And so then... She wrote this book, which was basically intended to make people cry. <laughs> <laughs> which is why the dedication is for Kate, because she cried. Which is... Uh, oh, that's fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird, uh, creepy kind of dedication. Uh, but anyway, so um, I would say that the the part where I got a little emotional when reading this book is uh, in that chapter where... Like basically everyone thinks that Sam is dead because they gave him meningitis. That was a whole crazy plot. I think. Okay, first of all, the fact that they even came up with the meningitis was weird. I'm like, why don't why doesn't somebody just like sneeze in your face and then lock you in a hot car? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, maybe the hot car had something to do with it. Right. Well, I guess it's uh, it's September. It's you know 42 degrees out apparently. So the hot car thing would have to wait, and he's... Yeah. But, uh, yeah, nonetheless. Anyway, so... Um, and then uh, Isabel, like, first she calls her to, you know, see how she's doing, even though they're 
they're in the same parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> but she calls her and um and Grace is like, it turns out it's actually easier to talk about this when it's not in person. And then she's like, let's go to the mall. And they go to the mall and like they go shopping, whatever. It's like cute. It's like, I'm like, you know, this is someone who is grieving her own brother, you know, who just died again, but this time for real. And, uh, you know, and she's having this kind of bonding mo- moment with Grace, who has really been kind of a jerk to her the whole time. So uh, I, I, I was touched by that. I admit it. My favorite scene was honestly when Grace made Isabel help her make a quiche. Yeah, that was great. Because that was just so weird. That like, was very random. <laughs> like I will, I will, I will talk to you, but first you got to beat these eggs, and then you got to make a crust. And then I was like, why don't you just put on the radio really loud so your parents can't hear you talk, and just talk? Like her parents are paying any attention. I know they're they're busy doing whatever it is that they do i'm like just talk rather than make a quiche but the fact that they spent a whole chapter like 90 percent of the chapter was you know her telling her to help her make a quiche and then in the last like very last bit of the chapter she's like okay now i'll talk yeah what the fuck why why would you do that yeah yeah (laughs) i i have nothing to say about that other than Absolutely correct. Yeah, I, I just thought it was really, 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 really weird and random. And if I had to find out about my supposedly dead brother and what, what somebody knew about it, I would be like, yeah, I'll get the cheese. Not a problem. How do, how do I cut these mushrooms first? Because that's more important, right? M- mushrooms? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Anyway, um... I just thought that that whole chapter was so weird and made me a little <laughs> uncomfortable and made me really dislike Grace because I, I was like, are you stalling or are you hungry? Like, what is going on here? Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I, I feel like sort of the idea was to give Sam a chance to get a little more familiar with Olivia and decide whether or not to fill her in what's going on. Cause that's what the result is. Sam like is like, okay, this person seems like someone that we can talk to. I think that's more or less how that ends, but it yeah. isn't really set up that way. And, and just the whole thing is really weird. Yeah. Super, super strange. Can I talk about songwriting? I would love if you did. Okay. So, um, I am myself a singer songwriter. <laughs> And it turns out so is Sam. Sam is the uh, the werewolf who likes to write songs and poetry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, his songs. And all that stuff like where he's just going along and then um you know so a some lyrics come into his mind. That stuff really really uh annoyed me. But when he's like, yeah, so I saw her getting eaten by a wolf and I thought <laughs> Hmm. I've got the first couplet for my next hit single. I'm just looking for an example here. Um, Grace reached over and began stroking her fingers through my hair. I closed my eyes and let her drive me crazy. And then it goes all italic, which is you know how you know it's poetry. <laughs> <laughs> she draws patterns on my face. These lines make shapes that can't replace the version of me that I hold inside. When lying with you, lying with you, lying with you. I like your hair, she said. Yeah, there's a lot of that kind of flowery poetic talk. And I guess uh, Maggie uh, Stiefvater is herself a songwriter. I don't know. It's kind of weird. And that lyric also seems to be a common characteristic of uh, his his songs, which is that uh, parts of them kind of rhyme and then other parts don't. And there are also a lot of words that just get repeated a lot. Uh, which is fine. It's hard to judge a song just by the lyrics because most lyrics just seem really stupid. But uh, if you read them, even of great songs, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe like I fell for her in summer, my lovely summer girl. Yeah. Well, yes. Uh, summer. Yeah, that is a lyric that ha- repeats the word "summer girl" a lot. It rhymes "summer girl" with "summer girl." <laughs> it's a perfect rhyme. It is. Yep. Yeah. All the letters are right there. All the syllables. So at one point, he takes her to a uh, 
candy shop in the town he grew up in and tells her that the truffles there are so good that he wrote a song about them. Yes. Um, but he does not give the lyrics, which is very disappointing to me. I would like to see what that song was. So I wrote to you, Carrie. Yes, you did. And I said, why don't you write some lyrics about truffles? And then I'll set them to music and record them. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I wrote really bad lyrics because he is not a good writer. Yeah. And it's really hard to write a song by a teenage werewolf <laughs> about trouble. Sure. And have it not be as ridiculous as possible. So I wrote a really bad song. Right. And you have not heard what I came up with that. But... I have not heard it and I can't wait. <laughs> All right. Shall I play this now? I would love for you to. All right. I'm, uh, let me see if I can figure out how to get this microphone to work here. All right. Can you hear the guitar? I certainly can. A heart made of cocoa, all rolled up in dirt. A decadent treat, a tiny dessert. I can't get enough of you, and one more can't hurt. You're such a sweetheart, a tiny dessert. Oh, truffle, 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 not much rhymes with you, except duffle and kerfuffle, and ruffle, and reshuffle too, and reshuffle too. This is very good. <laughs> it's amazing in so many ways. <laughs> We make a good team. <laughs> You're so good to me, I must reassert. I love your soft insides, you tiny dessert. Get a little erotic there. I did. <laughs> I can't get enough of you, and one more can't hurt. You're such a sweetheart. A tiny dessert. Oh, truffle, 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 truffle. Not much rhymes with you. Except duffle and kerfuffle. And ruffle. And reshuffle too. And reshuffle too. That was beautiful. Well, I had I had those lyrics to work with. You did those amazing, <laughs> um, oh, so well written, so well written, so bad. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Carrie. I, I appreciate you going along with that. Well, you know, I, I think I wrote it in about twenty minutes on my lunch break. Perfect. Because that's what a teenage werewolf would do. Yes, or you, know? you would just sort of come to him as he was going into the store. Can I tell you my favorite line in the whole book? Please do. Or my favorite two lines in the whole book. Um, Grace was, you know, she she found out that this this boy that she met was a werewolf. And, you know, she was asking some, some questions about specifics. And she asks him, and I quote, what do you eat? Oh, yes. Baby bunnies. <laughs> she narrowed her eyes. So I grinned and said, adult bunnies too i'm an equal opportunity bunny eater like what the fuck what kind of guy when you first meet him i i i, I would have gone with the adult bunnies first like if i if i if i met a man and it was like oh by the way i'm a werewolf and he asked me what i ate i'd probably just say adult bunnies and really ugly things starting with well, I eat tiny baby bunnies and the cutest little things you could possibly find. Tee-hee! Baby bunnies? Oh, you psychopath. Well, I think he was actually uh, softening the blow because later on it turns out that he also eats cats. Yeah, <laughs> but at least he didn't eat. So Jack <clears throat> ate his sister's dog. Yeah. That was pretty classy. That was a good move. <laughs> yes, nice job, Jack. Oh, but yeah, I mean... it. Like I said before, it wasn't poorly written. 
I think it was a, a well-written book, and I think Maggie Steve Otter is not a bad writer. I think she's just like, I haven't been making enough money lately. Let me make a, a trilogy about werewolves, and that'll get me a fortune. I, I don't know. I, I would like to say, so the next book that we're going to read um, is, it seems like it's, it's also kind of a uh, YA, you know, romance themed book. I just read the first two chapters, so I don't know a lot about it. Um, and this is a book that you really love. I love it. It's my favorite. It's so good. I have so many good things about it. And listeners... If this is your favorite book as well, which it has to be, um, you and I are going to be best friends for life because it's now the book that I use to test to see if I'm going to be like compatible with, with somebody friend-wise because for my YA book club, uh, this is a book that I have everybody read at some point. And if somebody says, oh, I don't like that book very much, I say, well, then I hate you and I want you dead. Nice. Yes. Um, and so the book is called Anna and the French Kiss, and it's by Stephanie Perkins. Yeah, it's so good. I can't wait. Right. So I just want to make it clear that we don't, we're not down on the idea of romantic old type books in general. Uh, just we did not think this one was very good. I, I think in as a whole, I don't like romance. As a whole, I don't enjoy it. But you give me a Stephanie Perkins book, and my God, I'm a sap. So I am really excited about this book. Yeah, and I'm I'm looking forward to reading. I, you know, as I said, I read the first two chapters. The first chapter, I was like, "This is I don't like this person at all." And then the second <laughs> chapter, I was like, oh, "Okay, I get it." Yeah, and I know that you like it because you're my friend, and you have to. It's a law. Yeah, otherwise you'll you'll uh, hunt me down and kill me, and that that would be pretty much that would be an unfortunate final episode of the podcast. Yeah, it's like oh, sorry, y'all. I ate him. Yeah. Is there anything else that we should say about Shiver before we move on? Every parent in this book is he- terrible. Everybody should get new parents. Mm. Don't be a shitty parent. That's that's my takeaway from this book. It's, uh, that's the moral. The moral of the story is occasionally watch your kid yeah. and know what they're up to. Because if not, they'll be a werewolf. Otherwise, just get a cat to begin with. Don't, don't <laughs> yes. bother with the kid. Yes. If you're going to replace your kid with a cat anyway, just, just start with a cat. Yeah. Very good. Uh, I'm down with that 100%. Um, so uh, as maybe was mentioned earlier, we got a bu- We got some feedback from people. We got uh, our first iTunes review, very exciting, from Grace Elm, who was kind enough to give us a five-star review and say some nice things about us. So that was great. And then we also got some listener email, which I thought I would uh, read now and we could talk about it. Oh, yay. All right. So our first email is from Craig Redacted. And Craig says, I'm not well versed in YA, which joined the club, Craig. I uh, I'm, I wasn't really before I started this podcast myself. Um, but I can ask a more general question that I genuinely like you like to hear your thoughts on. What qualities make good YA fiction, which are separate from those which make good adult fiction? Oh, well, Mr. Redacted. I have a lot of things to say about that. Um, I would say that good YA has to have believable characters. um, And that's maybe the most important thing, because usually writers who are writing uh, YA fiction have not been a young adult for a while. And so being able to... um, accurately convey the the teenage voice is really important and if you don't um you're going to end up with um you know just something that's not very good because if you don't believe a teenager's emotions if you don't believe um, their journey you're not going to enjoy the book that's my first thing what do you think jacob yeah uh that all makes sense to me like i feel like um the books that we've read and that we might talk about, you know, a lot of them are really character based and a lot of that determined whether or not we liked them depend on what we thought about those characters. Uh, you know, young adult novel, uh, part of your problem with that is that you hated all the characters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nancy Drew, uh, you know, we didn't like all the minuetting and whatnot. Um, and then unwind the characters were really great in that. Uh, and I think that's, 
I don't know. It seems like they're mostly in the first person, but I don't think that's necessarily required. But that definitely also makes the whole characterization thing a lot more important. Um, yeah, and I mean, I don't think... Right. I, I think that... Yeah, I, I think that's accurate. And, you know, obviously you want good characters in adult fiction too, but it makes sense to me that it's even more important in books like these. Um, yeah, because, I mean, if you're writing an adult novel, you are an adult. You understand adult themes because that's the world you live in. You might not understand everything. You might be, you know, a female writing um a male character or vice versa where, you know, I don't know the male voice or a male doesn't know the, a, a woman's, you know, voice as well. But I think um, with young adult fiction, just because, you know, what we think of as teenage things are, you know, can be tropes. And so to make sure that you're not um, stereotyping a, the teenage voice or the teenage experience and, um, but accurately portraying it, you know, I wrote a book now uh, set today and I didn't and nobody had a cell phone or you know things like that like you'd be like what the hell is with these kids but also if I you know had them only talk in lol speak that would not be realistic either because you know teenagers don't actually talk like that so um, I think just to to be able to accurately portray a teenage voice and also to accurately portray uh, the teenage experience because you know, it's not just sex, sex, sex. You know, there's so many things going on um, from parents to school to, you know, to sex, to friends, to all sorts of things um, that it's not just it's not just a one sided thing. It's very multifaceted. So, um, you know, books that were written a while ago that probably would be considered YA right now. Um, you know, Catcher in the Ride, To Kill a Mockingbird, uh, Romeo and Juliet. They're all um, accurately portraying the teenage experience for that time or the, the younger person's experience for that time. Um, and I think that's that's what's important for, uh, for modern YA as well. I like that a lot. <laughs> I have a lot to say about YA, people. Thanks. Yeah, it's good. Thank you, Craig Redacted, for asking me a question that I can just ramble on about. Yeah. Uh, so then uh, we got another email from Sarah Redacted, no relation, <laughs> uh, asking, have either of you read The Maze Runner? I read it and I thought the ending was really disappointing. So I read the other books in the series to see if they resolve things better. They did not. They did not. Oh, my God. So I have read all but the final book in the Maze Runner series. And the first book, I was like, yeah, I can totally dig this. This is dystopian future and things are kind of cool and creepy and, and I, I was digging on it but the author did a really poor job of describing things so in the end of the story where you know it was very you know action based I couldn't follow it because I didn't know I couldn't imagine what anything looked like so that really just sort of bummed me out and then all of a sudden it was over and it was all you know an experiment mm -hmm. it's just like oh man this sucks so bad i want to pee on it like i'm a werewolf like what the fuck so i liked it but i also found it to be yeah it, he couldn't wrap it up well he wrapped it up about as well as stephen king does you know where he just mm -hmm. sort of it'd be better if you just rambled on for another 500 pages rather than try to end it because you don't know how to do an ending all right well uh the, those are the the two emails we got, but if anyone out there has any questions for us, you can write to them at podcast at loveyoulikecrazy.com, and I'll get that, and we'll read them on a future episode, probably. Yay. Probably, because it's actually kind of fun. I think you all should send us questions, because I enjoy them. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What else? I guess that's it. We talked about the next book we're going to read. I know that we want to talk about um, the Golden Compass series at some point. We might do that sometime oh, soon. Oh, I think we should do that after we do Anna, because I'm really excited to, to talk about that book. Um, I haven't read it in a couple of years now, and I love that whole series, and so I'm really, really excited. So I think um, the book after Anna, maybe we could read Golden Compass. Yeah. And then awesome. I, <laughs> I want to do another really terrible book sometime, but not for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> this yeah. one was this one was rough. If anybody ever has any suggestions, you know, st- something you want us to read or that you want us to talk about, let us know. I'm I'm always excited to to find a new book or um, talk about a book I haven't read in a while. Um, so yeah, suggestions are always welcome. Yep, and as you know, as I said, you can write it to podcast at Love You Like Crazy. You can also we have a Facebook page. You can comment there, and uh, we're also on Twitter at. Uh, I think love y a pod something like that <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out yeah you'll figure it out um so you know these are all ways to get in touch with it so uh yeah, I guess um I should thank the sentimental favorites for letting us use their song Hey there as a theme, and I should thank all you for listening. I should thank you, Carrie, for uh introducing me to the so terrible world of shiver, oh my god uh but it was it was uh it couldn't have been more fun talking to you about it always a delight even yeah. when the book is shite yes har, har, har. <laughs> fuck this book man <laughs> all right <laughs> this book uh, i'll talk to you soon yep bye bye a heart made of cocoa all rolled up in dirt a decadent tree a tiny dessert I can't get enough of you, and one more can't hurt. You're such a sweetheart, a tiny dessert. Oh, truffle, 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 truffle. Not much rhymes with you, except duffle and kerfuffle. And ruffle, and reshuffle too, and reshuffle too. You're so good to me, I must reassert. I love your soft insides, you tiny dessert. I can't get enough of you, and one more can't hurt. You're such a sweetheart, a tiny dessert. Oh, truffle, 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 truffle. Not much rhymes with you, except duffle and kerfuffle and ruffle and reshuffle too and reshuffle too Love I like crazy.com